smile, Corey. Got him. Hey guys, it's Matt Pittman of Meat Church and welcome to another episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. You might be asking yourself, why am I wearing such an amazing party shirt? Well, because this is the 20th episode of Traeger Kitchen Live and my fifth. So needless to say, it's a big party here in Texas today uh, in the sweltering heat. But I'm excited today because we are going to teach you one of my most favorite recipes, which is pork belly burn ends. Uh, honestly, I can't believe it took us until the 20th episode uh, to do this recipe. This is super popular uh, amongst Traeger Nation, but it's a recipe that I developed years ago, uh, gained a lot of popularity, and honestly, I'm just like really, really, really excited to share it with you guys. If you don't know who I am, I'm the founder, pit master, head janitor at Meat Church Barbecue. We're about a six-year-old uh, barbecue lifestyle brand. I'm one of Traeger's barbecue ambassadors. Uh, I spend a lot of my time teaching uh, uh, Traeger Nation and sharing kind of what I do. Uh, we sell, you know, about 18 barbecue products and probably about 100 different shirts, hats, stuff like that, trying to be a lifestyle brand, like I said. But what I'm most passionate about is teaching you guys uh, and sharing my barbecue knowledge uh, for those of you in your backyards. This is my backyard. It might not look like it, but this is my outdoor kitchen. Uh, it's closed off on two walls and it's open on this end like my pool's right here so even though it doesn't look like it uh, i can assure you we are outside in the near 100 degree heat here today but uh, pretty excited to be here and with my buddy corey uh, aka robinson barbecue he's going to be fielding your questions so this is an interactive event i commit to answering as many questions as i can uh, today there's actually going to be some prizes uh, so you got to pay attention stay engaged and we're going to be giving away some stuff uh, throughout this. And then we're going to have like a, a grand prize at the end. Uh, any questions that I don't answer during the live, like I think we'll get most of them answered, I'll go back uh, into the Facebook post and the YouTube video. Uh, and I'll be sure to interact with you guys and answer anything um, that I can. So let's talk about what we're doing today. Um, so, you know, the flies in my backyard are smart. They know what goes on. So you'll just have to excuse them but luckily we're not a restaurant this is just for me tonight so it doesn't really matter you're staring at a gorgeous snake river farms eight and a half pound pork belly it's a skinless belly and as you can see it's got extra rib meat on it uh, which sometimes that's kind of hard to find but i can tell you is some of the best tasting pork belly you're ever going to have so no doubt this is going to be amazing uh, you know pork belly in my opinion is tip, uh, you know, when I got exposed to pork belly, it was folks cooking it at like a lot of Asian restaurants, things like that. Uh, so we're going to put an Asian twist on it today. It, just the way we serve it at the end, we're going to serve it on a on a bao bun with a with an apple slaw. But other than that, if you don't go that route, what we're going to teach you really is just a tried and true hardcore barbecue recipe. Um, I'm going to tell you why I love this recipe, and then we're just going to we're going to get into it. So this cut of pork belly is not that expensive, right? I told you this came from Snake River Farms. Uh, you could order this off of their website. But locally, wherever you're at, um, you know, where can you get pork belly? Fortunately for us, we can get it at our local grocery store. If you don't see it in the grocery store, I would just ask for it to see if they have it. Costco is usually a, usually a great option to get pork belly. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive. A belly this size is normally around 30 bucks. I like cooking this because for 30 bucks I can feed a ton of people, so it's pretty inexpensive to be honest with you. And honestly, it's difficult to screw up. So, uh, you know, if you're just starting out in barbecue, you've never done this, this is something that you wouldn't be too intimidated to try. Um, what I'm going to show you is my typical, what I call straightforward way to make amazing barbecue. Minimal ingredients, uh, we're not going to do a lot to it, and it's going to be incredible. So. So let's talk about where this recipe came from as far as um, how I approach it and what I do with it. So buddy of mine, Travis Heim, he's known as the guy, the godfather of what he calls bacon burn-ins. That's going to be a little bit different, but still, you know, very similar in ways. And so we saw what Travis did and we put our own spin on it. And, you know, we've been doing this for, I don't know, probably five years or so. But pork belly, this is, uh, this is a skinless again, uncured pork belly. So if I took this piece of meat, 
and if I put it in like a dry cure for a week, um, that would magically turn into bacon. I would take that meat then, I would rinse it off, pat it dry, I would put it on the Traeger at 165 degrees, super low, um, or sorry, I would, I would put it on super low, like 170, 180 degrees, and I would cook it until it's 165 degrees and, and you would have bacon. You could slice that into bacon. We're not doing that today. Um, we're gonna cook this thing you know, from raw as is. And if you tuned in probably about a month ago, Eduardo Garcia cooked pork belly. His was, his was uh, a lot different, but you know, made me super hungry watching his episode. This is going to take on a kind of sweeter flavor profile. So I grew up in the deep south, so Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and I grew up on pulled pork. So um, for me, the flavor profile we're going to go with comes from kind of a southern barbecue flavor profile. So you've got pork, you've got barbecue sauce. Uh, we're in Texas where barbecue sauce really isn't a thing. Uh, we say that good barbecue doesn't need sauce, so we're a beef state and there's never sauce served with it. But with pork, you generally always serve sauce with it and we're definitely gonna do that today, uh, but it's gonna be quite simple. So when I started cooking this, I figured out you could cook it a couple different ways to get to what we're gonna call pork belly burn-ins. But let's talk about burn-ins first before we get into this. What is a burnt-in? So in Kansas City, a restaurant called Arthur Bryant's, uh, they came up with brisket burn-ins years ago. So they would have a picture of this as a cooked brisket. Um, and when they were at service, they would take their knife and they would cut off the edges or uh, things that they didn't want to serve. And honestly, they'd hand them out as samples to their customers and they became wildly popular. And at a point, they decided, you know what? We need to sell this and we need to monetize it and that's what they've done. So um, you take brisket, you serve the, the edges off of it and, you know, call it burn-ins. Um, and, you know, and they saw some of the things that I'm going to show you today. But that's a true burn-in. And if you know me and you know my past, you know that I've been pretty vocal on the Internet with uh, you know, my buddy, Dr. Barbecue. He disagreed with a lot of people that these should be called pork belly burn-ins because there's only one true burn-in. That's fine. You know, I have no issue with that. But if you're going to cook this piece of meat like a brisket burn-in, then I don't know why you can't call it a pork belly burn-in. So... You call it whatever the hell you want. I call it delicious. Today we're calling it pork belly burn ends. So I mentioned there's two ways to cook it. The way that I'm not going to cook it is to cook it whole. We're actually going to cut this into cubes raw. We'll go with that in a second. But what I want to do before we get started, well, first off, I need to hydrate. The coldest beer in Ellis County. But if you wanted to cook this whole, you could do that. And what I'm going to do, so today I've got uh, two blocks here. This is my rosewood block and this is a rosewood block topper. So I'm gonna to prep on this and I'm gonna get rid of it. And then we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna have our cooked meat on the block later. So we've got a raw meat up here now. If I wanted to cook this whole, I would cook it over to where I can show you the fat side. You basically would treat this like a brisket. But what I would do first is I would take your knife and I use Messermeister um, chef knives and I would score this fat. There's a lot of fat back here. I always get asked that. What do you do with the fat? We don't need to trim it off. You also don't need to be scared of it. I mean, the first time my wife saw this much fat, she's like, there's no way I'm going to eat that. But when you do what we're going to do today, it's going to be amazing. But if you wanted to cook it whole, um, what I would do is take my knife and I would just make an incision diagonally across it. I'm only going in like a quarter inch. And I would do that like every inch or so in a, in a grid pattern. And the reason you're doing that is when you, when you, you know, smoke meat with, with a high heat or with heat, uh, this fat is going to shrink up. And what would happen is this pork belly would do like this. So if you ever cook something that's flat and as you cook it, it curls up, that's because the fat is squeezing together. So I'm just going to make some score marks on it. I'm going to turn it and do it the exact opposite way. And I'm barely, I'm barely cutting in this. And again, we're not going to cook it this way. I'm just showing you a quick way in case you want to do this because some people prefer to cook it this way. The prep is easier. Um, I think the method I'm going to teach you yields a superior result, but I'm big on saying my way is not the right way. It's just what I do. So if you want to try this, try this. So what we're left with are a bunch of diamonds on the back of this pork belly. Now if I cook this, when the fat cinches up, this, this pork belly... Um, this pork belly will not do this. The pork belly will lay flat. So again, if you wanted to cook it flat, you could season this. You could put it in your Traeger and you could cook it till it was about 195 degrees internal temperature. You could cube it up. You could season it, sauce it, put it back in the pit in a pan for 30 minutes to an hour and have pork belly burn ends. But today we're actually going to go a different way, uh, which is cubing it raw in advance. And I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. So let me talk about why I love this recipe. 
So once we figured out the way that we like to cook it, what I'm about to show you, um, we go to a very popular barbecue festival in Texas. It's called the Red Dirt Barbecue and Music Festival. It's in Tyler, Texas. It's got Texas Red Dirt Music and 20-ish barbecue joints and some of the top barbecue joints in the state. Well, we don't own a restaurant by choice, yet we're lucky enough to have, with this recipe, one of the longest lines. So the first time we rolled this out there, I'll never forget the promoter, Chase Colson, walked up to me and he said, dude, your line's longer than the beer line. And so I was pretty proud of that. And that was off this recipe. So if you're ever in Texas, normally this is in May, it was postponed this year. Uh, come hang out with us at Red Dirt. It's one of the, uh, you know, it's amazing music, great barbecue, and we always have some flavor of our burn in. So we'll do that here. No, we're not doing that. Okay. All right. So we're going to get started. And we're going to, um, again, we're going to cube this in advance and we're going to get rolling um, and kind of show you my method. And, and this will be, this will be fairly straightforward. All right, we're going to glove up. It's because it's hot. But I'll tell you now, I'm at home. I'm not, we always get these comments. I'm at home. I'm in my backyard. I'm not a restaurant. So my hands are clean, being safe. I'm not serving this to anybody. So um, it's funny, no, whether I glove or don't glove, there's people that comment both ways. Like, you should have gloves on. Why do you have gloves on? You're going into surgery? So anyway. But if you're feeding a bunch of people, wash your hands. Hey, you should be washing your hands anyway. All right, so let's, we're going to get questions while I'm doing this. What is the drink for the night? Uh, the Yeti Rambler mug contains, like I said, the coldest beer in Ellis County, which, as you know, is hand cramping cold Miller Lite. And it's mighty good. Where can I get that shirt? Oh, where can you get the shirt? So we have fans of the Ron Swanson shirt. This shirt is amazing. I don't know. I got it on the Internet. And it feels good right here. Like, I feel you look this good, you're going to cook good. So just FYI. Okay, I'm going to start cutting. Um, you, can, you guys ask questions, jump in. Um, I should be pretty thorough with this, but fire away. So with the belly, what I'm going to do is my goal here is to cut it into about one-inch cubes. And this is up to you. You can go a little bigger, a little, little smaller. I don't like them to be much bigger. Um, I like them at about one inch, and I'll show you why. I'll have raw, and I'll show you what they look like after we cook them. You'll see what we're left with. You certainly could go smaller if you want, if you want it to be like a little more crispy or something, but I'll show you why I do what I do here in just a second. So let's get started. Okay, there's not a lot of trim to do, but if something's hanging off, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trim that. So I'm going to do, uh, like I said, about a... First, I'm gonna, I am going to trim up the edge because it's just not even. In order to get even... Um, inch pieces. I'm going to just cut it into a nice square and then we're going to cut our one inch pieces or one inch strips to start. Where can you buy belly locally? Where can I buy belly locally? Um, here in Dallas Fort Worth, Costco is a great option um, to get it. Uh, you can also go to snakeriverfarms.com and they're going to have it as well. And we're just going to cut a few strips here. You want a really sharp knife and a really cold belly. Anytime you're trimming any meat, brisket, whatever, trim it straight out of the fridge so that it's nice, uh, nice and firm and easier to cut. And this one's got, so I'll tell you, I mentioned this one has extra rib meat on it. The first time I ever saw a belly like this, I was teaching barbecue in Sweden, and that extra rib meat is awesome. So after we cube this, they won't look as pretty because that meat's sticking up, but who cares? I mean, I care about what it tastes like. All right, now that I've got these one-inch strips, I'm going to uh, cut these, you know, just into one-inch squares. We got questions while I'm doing this? What kind of knife is that? Uh, I use Messermeister knives. So this uh, German steel, this is the Olivia Elite Series. I love these knives. I uh, lo just love the handle. And honestly, the way, it, the way it fits in my hand, I've used a lot of other knives. I like how this one holds an edge. Uh, but this one, just the balance in my hand, this is the perfect feeling chef knife. And that's why I use it. How much does that belly weigh? How much does this belly weigh? This belly was eight and a half pounds. By the way, I tried to put... Uh, I, you know, having done this, this is our fifth time. If you go to the Meat Church Instagram, so just at Meat Church, if you go to our story, we try to put some tips in there. We've uh, 
covered this cook up until the point of the belly going in the Traeger, and then we stopped it so that you know you would come watch this. I'll post the rest of it later. But um, one of the points of doing that is so that I can list all the tools that we use. So in case you forget, you can go over to Instagram uh, and you guys can check that out. Plus, if you're a Traeger customer and you're not following Meat Church, you're in the minority. Can you brine the belly first? Can you brine the belly first? Uh, sure, you could. I don't think there's a reason to. There's so much fat in this that I don't think there's any reason, but you certainly can. With any barbecue meat, uh, you know, I say it's like a, like a road map. Where are you going to take it? What are you going to do with it? And the first question is, do I want to brine, marinate, or inject it to impart moisture, maybe a little bit of flavor, uh, maybe a lot of flavor if you're marinating? Um, you know, but on pork belly, I do not brine it personally. How much fat do you trim off the top? Well, how much fat do I trim off the top? I actually didn't trim any. I just trimmed off a random piece of meat that was flailing off. But all this fat back here, even though it looks like a lot, like you guys know what bacon looks like. A slice of bacon, there's a lot of fat. You don't have to trim it off. I'm going to keep, I'm going to cut a little bit more of this. Okay. Knife sharpener recommendations. I'll give you a few. So I have a work sharp. Uh, I have a couple work sharps, just home unit that I use. Uh, I have a local knife sharpener that I use. And then, you know, over the summer uh, with COVID, I've been using Knife Aid, a uh, company that you can find on Instagram where you pay a fee and they ship you a package. You put your knives in it uh, and they ship them back to you, which is actually pretty dang handy. We were traveling back and forth between here and our other house and so it was kind of cool from one house to like send in your knives and by the time you got back they were they were there again I like that okay more questions yep. uh, i'm just gonna keep since there's questions i'm gonna i'm gonna keep cutting have you ever or would you ever inject the pork belly have i ever injected or would i inject a pork belly that's the same thing as the brining marinating question i just don't think it needs it um you certainly could I mean, we sell injections too, but I don't ever push them on people. I used to say that injecting was against my religion, but that depends. If you've got a lower grade cut of meat, if you've got a cut of meat that doesn't have a lot of fat or something like that, then that's certainly somewhere what I would inject, brine, marinate. But I, I'm telling you, I just wouldn't overthink this, me personally. Again, even though I say my way is not the right way and all that jazz, I just don't think it's necessarily needed in this particular meat. So try it. Let me know what you think. But I, I, I don't think you I mean, look at, okay, so look at this piece of meat. And you see all the fat in there. You can't get rid of those three layers of fat. You can only get rid of the bottom. I just don't see why you would inject it unless you're trying to change the flavor. You know, if you're really wanting to impart a different flavor profile, then maybe you inject it. But I don't think it's needed. What could you do with the extra meat? What could I? Well, there isn't going to be any extra meat. So this is all going to get cubed up. So the question is, what could I do with the extra meat? The only thing I had was this little strip. Normally, I don't have any extra meat. I'd cut this all up. Um, so I don't, I don't think you're going to need it to be, to be honest with you. I'm just not cubing this entire thing while we're talking. Uh, but there shouldn't be any extra meat other than like a little piece you trim. Could you use honey hog pot? Okay. So there's a question about the seasoning. I'm going to save that question, uh, for when we season here in just a second, which I'm going to start doing that now. Question about overcooking. I'm also going to save that for when we talk about cooking it. Let's get into seasoning it. Today we're going to use our OG honey hog rub. This is one of the two rubs I took on the TV show Barbecue Pitmasters in 2014. Uh, Tuffy Stone said he loved the flavor profile and took some home. So I think this is the best rub on the planet on pork, and so I love it. It's our all-purpose rub, and it has a little bit of honey powder added to it for a little more sweetness, so it, it pairs perfect with pork. It's also known to have an amazing color on pork. Uh, my true story, my son, my eight-year-old son runs around with a bottle of this in the door of my truck, in the meat church shop, in our kitchen that he pours straight in his hand and just eats it straight every day. Honey hogs in his veins, puts it on his popcorn. Um, your kids will love this rub. And I'm going to start seasoning while I'm talking. This is going to take a lot of seasoning, um, which let me take this point. Let me take this moment to talk about why I cube this up in advance. So I talked earlier about you could have cooked, cooked the belly whole. If I would have cooked this belly whole, I would have seasoned the top, the bottom, and the edges. 
and I would have cooked it until it was tender and went to cube it up. When you do that, you're going to have, you know, four sides inside each piece of meat that didn't have any seasoning on them. Brisket burn-ins are cooked that way, so it's okay. But what I found with pork belly, I like to season them thoroughly now like this. Um, that way you get caramelization, color on all sides, you get more seasoning. I think it turns out better. And I'll show you the final product clearly here in a little bit. So that's why I cube this in advance. I think it yields a better product. But again, you could go either way. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna start seasoning. This seasoning is fine, it comes out fast, that's okay. You're not gonna hurt it. Um, this is gonna be a lot. We're gonna season what I'm gonna consider liberally. And I would like to let this sit and adhere for like 15 minutes. When this gets wet, uh, when it looks wet, that's just the uh, seasoning pulling the moisture out of the meat. And it's, then at that point, it's nice and adhered. This is something you certainly could do the day before. If you're gonna cook this on the weekend, you could do this step right here Friday night. Uh, you could put it in a steam pan and you could put it in your fridge, no problem, won't hurt it. Uh, it's also okay to do it right before you cook it. But I'm gonna, I'm just gonna toss this by hand. This isn't gonna be perfect and that's okay. Get messy with it, no biggie. And we're just gonna keep on seasoning while we're talking. Keep tossing it, get dirty with it, no big deal. Fire away your questions before we get into cooking. What do we have that's not pork belly cooking related? Anything on the prep? They're just about done with the prep. Just gonna keep tossing and seasoning. What do you look for in a pork belly? What's what do I look for in a pork belly? It's a really good question. So this is unlike a brisket to me. Most pork belly buy is gonna be a commodity belly. You don't have to go get a heritage breed hog like a Berkshire or something like that. When I say commodity, I mean you go to the grocery store and you buy ribs or pork butt or belly you're not normally looking at a grade, right? Like with beef, you're looking at Choice Prime, Wagyu. It's usually just commodity. It just usually is what it is, and that's okay. It, I mean, I, I enjoy nice pork, so if I'm making like a pork chop, I'd love a Berkshire pork chop. And, and don't get me wrong, if somebody's raising Berkshire hogs and you can get that for a belly, go do it. I mean, you know, this, this stuff is amazing, but don't feel like you have to find this like ultimate grade. Honestly, Whatever you can find in your town will be fine for this, for this recipe. There's just a lot of latitude with it. Um, you know, obviously the better the hog raising, the better it's going to turn out. But I can just tell you that people don't usually run around going, man, I got to have that like super expensive heritage breed hog to make really good pork belly. We're going to do a lot to this. I usually say I want the meat to speak for itself. This is going to have a lot of seasoning and a fair amount of sauce. So we're... We're turning this into candy, and I'm not running from it. It is what it is. If you don't like that, you think this isn't healthy for you, look, you don't make friends eating salad. That's not what we're here for. This is meat church. We're here to make this stuff taste good. How long does this entire process take? This process or the cook process? Okay, how long does this process take? All in, you're going to be looking at like three hours, maybe. I mean, we, and we'll go through that step by step, but the first step uh, in the cook is going to end up being about about two hours, so it's not you know not not too long all in. I'm just checking over to see if there's anything that I missed out on. I mean, I think that's pretty thorough. I think that's fairly thorough, and we're just going to let this sit. Uh, if I had all the time in the world, like I said, I'd love 15, 20 minutes. We're, I'm not going to make you wait 15 or 20 minutes, and so I'm going to end up putting this on a rack in just a second. But for that, let's get a question. Can you season or would you recommend? Can you season the night before? 100%. Won't hurt it. Cube this up in the evening on a Friday. Um, you know, like I said, throw it in a, in a steam pan. You probably need a full pan for a whole belly. Um, cover it with full. You can do the seasoning, let it adhere, cover it, put it in your fridge. Absolutely. In fact, what we cooked today, I prepped a little bit in advance of putting it on, and it won't hurt it. Anytime I can do my prep in advance, instead of doing it like, when I'm due to put it on, I'd rather get it out of the way. I'm big on preparation. What other meat church seasonings would work for this? What other meat church seasonings would work for this? This is a great question. The gospel, uh, holy gospel, if you want a little more pepper in it. Uh, these nuts, honey pecan, honey hog hot. Any of our more sweeter flavor profile rubs would work uh, on this. So we got a lot of options. The holy voodoo would be good. It's got a little pop to it. So I like, I'm going for a sweet profile with this one so any any of those options would work have you ever used chili infused honey have i ever used chili infused honey i've used lots of hot honeys absolutely and we're not doing it today but i love hot honeys like mike's hot honey 
Um, you know, we, we actually usually take local Burleson's honey from right here in Waxachie, Texas, and then we will put uh, pepper jellies in it to make it hot. Uh, very, very, very common. So I don't always buy a hot honey, but I usually basically make my own hot honey by taking honey and adding a pepper jelly to it. So this is a baking or cooling grid, and I know you're going to ask. I get them on Amazon. Uh, I already put this in my Instagram story. I get asked this all the time. I don't know the brand. It doesn't matter. Just search baking, cooling, grid, whatever. Why do I use this? I'm going to put all this pork belly on it because once it's on here, I can put it in the Traeger in one swoop. Otherwise, you've got to open your Traeger and put in 50 pieces. So this just makes life easier. Keeps it all together. Uh, you, can, um, you can put a drip pan underneath it to catch everything that comes off of it if you want. Do I use a binder? That's another great question. So if you know me, my, my methods are usually, I want to give you the most simplistic way to make amazing barbecue. What's a binder? Okay, a binder is a way for your seasoning to adhere to the meat quicker. Well, look at this. This meat is now soaking wet, and I didn't use a binder, so I don't think I needed it. But if you want to use it, totally fine. What binder would work? I'd slather it in yellow mustard if you wanted to, but it's hot out here. I mean, it's 90-something degrees, and if you look at these pieces of meat, I mean, look, they're all completely adhered. And, you know, there's no seasoning coming off these at this point. So I'm always about the less things, the better. But look, I grew up in the South where we put yellow mustard on pork. I put it on pork ribs. I put it on pork butt. It's okay. But in any barbecue, I only do it if I need it. So like a brisket. I never do it on a brisket. I don't say never. I mean, not that much. But I've got friends that put yellow mustard on their briskets. I've got friends that put Worcestershire, you know, just some vehicle for the stuff to adhere. So that's, that's kind of up to you. You don't ever taste that stuff. So, you know, people are like, oh, I don't like mustard. That is okay. You're not going to, if I covered this in mustard or if I covered a brisket in mustard and put salt and pepper on it, you wouldn't taste it. So that's not a big deal. So I'm just setting these on here. Um, I'm setting them on here fat up. That's my preference, but that's also not a big deal. Uh, so look, I'm a Texas purist. Like I cook my briskets fat up. I'm not, a, I'm not trying to be like a competition guy who's meat up. So that's why I started doing this pork belly fat up, but I think this fat as it renders and with the seasoning on it just kind of glistens and I, I like that better. But look, I'll show you. If you wanted to do one, you know, fat down, it does make a nice little stand for it to sit on. Some people think that works out better. So I don't think this really matters, but I'm just sticking with my fat up, my uh, fat up Texas roots. So that's why I do this, but I'm not hell bent on saying you got to do it one way or another. I'm just putting them on this wire rack and kind of pressing them down as best I can. And my dog is hungry. She doesn't understand quiet on set just yet. What's your recommendation on spacing between the cues? Recommendation on spacing. Just make sure they're not touching, but uh, not a big deal. Like, I'm trying to use my, not use my clean hand here. I'll wipe it off. But you just need to, you know, keep them apart here just a little bit. Uh, they're going to shrink up as they cook. So it's okay if they come close to touching because it's not, you know, it's going to, um, like I said, they're going to, fat's going to render out, the meat's going to shrink up, and we're going to be good to go. All right, I'm almost done here. Put these in the Traeger. Okay, a couple more. We're going to call it good. Okay, and then you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little more seasoning across the top for the kids, and that fly wants a little bit. Okay, all right, those are good. They're ready to go in. Um, you know, I would have used this too, but for time's sake, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move on. Let's talk about how we're going to um, how we're going to cook these. All right. So my timberline is set up at 250 degrees. You could go 225, 250, 275, anywhere in there. We're going 250 today, and we're running cherry pellets. I'm going to put some more in. So here in Texas, we cook with oak. We cook with post oak. Uh, I grew up on hickory. Those are heavier, smoky woods. And with pork, I want to go a little lighter smoke. I love cherry with pork for two reasons. Think about the pairing of a fruit wood with pork. 
cherry actually gives a nice red color to pork. So I'm a big fan of that. So we're running straight cherry. Other options, you could run pecan. Um, you could go as high as like a hickory. You could go with other fruit woods. Um, I'm very particular on my woods and my pellets. So I would hickory, pecan, cherry. I, I personally, that's where I'm gonna stay. So that's where I'm going with this. First step, it's a two-step cook. First step, uh, we're gonna put these in at 250 on this wire rack. I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna put some heat gloves on real quick. What grill model are you using? Grill model? What grill model? Today we're using a Traeger Timberline 1300. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Timberline series. Ever since they first came out, I can't say enough good things about them. And so I cook with them often. So this is my, this is my daily driver. Um, I've got every model, but I love the Timberline. This will work on any, anything you got. This is just what I cook on usually. And I've done every Traeger Kitchen Live on, on this one. Could I use our chicken fried breading on these and fry them? Great question. Um, we actually do a chicken fried brisket burn in. Absolutely. We cook these to where they're done first and then we fry them after. So don't fry them from raw. All right. I've got two things going here. I've got uh, some that are ready to come off. I'll get to that in a second. I'm going to pull them off. Oh, by the way, I just put on a cotton glove and pulled my nitro gloves over it. So that way I can feel what I'm doing. All right, I'm gonna put these in. Doesn't matter where you put them. I'm going on the top rack because that's where I've got room. Oh, maybe. So one thing about putting this on the top rack, anytime I can keep my grill clean, I usually will. So normally I'll throw a pan underneath here. I don't have one within reach. That way is all that fat renders and you're gonna render a ton of fat out of pork belly. It can drop in that pan instead of dropping in my grill, which it's okay to drop in the grill, but for me, the easier the cleanup, the better. All right, I'm gonna get rid of this now. Where can they find those cotton gloves? Where can you find these cotton gloves? I get these at a small tool company here called Harbor Freight. Uh, I used to, well, we sell them at our store, in store, not online. Uh, it's the only good item they sell at Harbor Freight. Everything else falls apart. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon. They're not, they're nothing special. It's just a cotton glove uh, with the nitro gloves pulled over the top. Okay, let's go on to stage two. Okay, this is what you're gonna be looking for. This pork belly cubed right here has been cooking for right at two hours at 200. I timed it just a, just a few minutes over two hours. Turn it 50 degrees. So I told you I went fat up. I just like this little fat pillow here with the seasoning on top. I think it looks really pretty uh, and, th and that's what I'm looking for. But, so you want your visual cues first in any barbecue you do. You wanna look at it and this is where your heart and everything comes into what you're doing. You look at this and say, man, that's achieving amazing color. That honey hog color has come through to where you've got the beautiful mahogany color. It smells awesome. You see these are, obviously these pieces are much smaller than what we started. And that's exactly what you're looking for. So for me, it's like, all right, those are starting to look good and I'm gonna tempt them along the way. You can use the leave-in thermometer in the Traeger if you want, which I have right here. I don't always put it in pork belly because they're kind of small pieces, but you certainly can put this in. Uh, we're looking for, you're looking for these. I'm trying to cook, this is very important. I'm looking for these, I'm cooking them to their tender. That's the key lesson. So when are they tender? They're usually tender around 195 degrees. So with my instant read thermometer, and I was probing these just before we started, so I know they're where we need to be. So I go down right in the middle into the meat and bam, this one is 192 degrees. This one, and that's a big one. So then if I go in a smaller one, 197. But what you're looking for is the feel. You want to be able to take one of these cubes and you want to put it in and basically have no resistance. I don't want it to fall apart, but I want it to be just like super tender. And that's where we're at on these. I'm looking for them to be tender. So this lesson on tenderness applies whatever you're cooking. If you're making a brisket and you're like, man, that brisket tasted awesome, but it was tough. Well, that's because you didn't cook it to a high enough temperature or the desired doneness we want to get you to. So cook it to tender. Now pork is done a lot earlier. I know people that cook these are like 165. You can do that, but this bite is gonna have a ton of chew to it. 
So what I want is, I want it, I'm, this is one of the secrets of my recipe, I'm cooking this to tenderness. I want my grandma to be able to gnaw these with no dentures, like, like gum them. So I want these suckers tender. So that's where we're at. So now let's go into step two of the cook. So get yourself just a disposable steam pan. This is a half pan because this is about half or three quarters of a belly. Uh, you saw we cut about three quarters of that one and it yielded one pan or one tray. So that was a similar amount for here. And then you're just going to take these and just put them in the tray. Did you ever spray the rack with nonstick spray before? Do I spray the rack with nonstick spray? I did not, and you're seeing these are come off. You can, no problem. These are just coming right off. It does make a messy rack when you're done. Like this is going to have to go, you know, in the dishwasher because that's going to be a pain in the butt to clean. Can you freeze pork belly and cook later? Absolutely, I'll take that raw belly, I'll freeze it, I'll cook it later. There we go, okay. So here's our belly. Now we need to go to step two, which is sauce the belly. So today we're gonna use Traeger's apricot sauce. I like it, again, we're going for a sweet flavor profile. I like fruit, so we're going apricot. If they don't have a wire rack, what would you recommend cooking on? If you don't have a wire rack, what would I recommend? You can stick them directly in the, on the grate, and I think that's what a lot of people do. But I just go on Amazon and order that wire rack just because it makes life easier. You see that I opened that Traeger, I got in, put the tray in, got back out, closed it, and didn't lose much heat. That's it's a big deal on a lot of cookers. You want the recovery time to be as short as possible. And I mean, the good news with a Traeger is they're so efficient, they recover really quickly anyway. But to the extent I can not lose heat, great. So I want to be in and out. I mean, I don't want to be in there putting in 50 pieces, but you can. If you don't have that rack, feel free to just put it right on the rack and, and on you go. Here's what we're going to do. What I'm looking for is the equivalent of this cube to be covered in sauce. Not, not like, I don't want an inch of sauce in the pan. So when this runs off, I just am trying to glaze it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a light coating of this in here. You can always add more, you can't take away, so go easy. And then I'm going usually about three to one to honey. I like to use honey with my barbecue to kind of cut it or to thin it. I shouldn't say cut, I've been told cutting things is a drug term. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna use this one hand here because I didn't bring a lot of gloves up here. And I'm just gonna toss these cubes around because again, I'm just trying to coat each of these cubes. So again, I don't want a half inch sauce in a pan. I just want every cube covered all the way in sauce. That's all I'm looking for. I actually did all right with my, uh, my first try. I think I'm gonna add just a little more because the sauce is obviously gonna cook down. So I'm gonna put just a little bit more in here. Does the rack position matter, top or bottom rack? Does the rack position matter? No, it doesn't. But anytime on a Traeger, I can stay away from the bottom middle where the fire pot is, I will, but that doesn't mean you have to. Uh, but no, I, I mean, I like to cook on the middle rack, especially when I'm shooting these videos so you can see it better. But usually I, I cook on the middle rack and I fill it up first and then I use the bottom rack, then I use the top rack. That's just my preference. Okay, these are pretty good and, and covered here, which uh, I know we got a top view as well, but let me hold these up and show you. And that's, you know, pretty good. Pretty good and covered. So now we're going to go to step two, which is place this pan back in the Traeger uncovered. You don't want to cover this with foil because if you cover it with foil, you'll steam the meat and all that sauce will run off of it. We're trying to caramelize or lock in this sauce, basically. So we're going to take this, we're going to put it back in the Traeger you got to go at least 30 minutes. Some people go as far as an hour. I don't want to really cook all the sauce off, so I normally go 30-ish, 40 minutes or so. We're going to go right back in. So, you know, do what you feel like here. You're going to have to grab those bowels out of the cambro. The bowels, the bow buns. Okay, while that, we're waiting on our, um, our, our uh, we've got some other pork belly in there that's in the sauce. We're going to let it continue to render and we're going to make a slaw real quick. You sit right there. 
this is a this is a different. I mean, we're calling it a slaw, but it's really different. Uh, this is where we're going to go with a little bit of an Asian flair. So we're going to make uh, a Granny Smith apple slaw, which is really, honestly, really simple. Um, the the recipe's on Traeger's site. It's uh, two Granny Smith apples, half an onion, um, some some brown mustard, a little bit of cider vinegar, and uh, my favorite rub, veggie rub, because anybody called Meat Church loves a veggie rub. This makes my mom happy. This is how I get my veggies. So we're going to just dump all of this in. Actually, we'll just use this bowl here that, that the apples are in. So we've got some super thinly sliced uh, Granny Smith apples and some thinly sliced red onion. I'm going a little less in the recipe just because I'm not feeding that many people today. I'm feeding myself. We'll mix that up. You could use any slaw you want. I mean, this is optional. It's just like we like to pair things and um, make things a little bit different. So um, we're going to serve these on a bao bun that we've steamed and uh, thought, why not put it with a little apple slaw? So I'm going to put my brown mustard in. A little bit of cider vinegar. And go in the veggie rub. I mean, you could, you know, you could substitute whatever rub you want, uh, but this rub is actually like quite tasty. Let me mix it up here. But you could use like a southern coleslaw if you want. You know, like a mayonnaise-based coleslaw if you want to go um, go that route. Some people don't like coleslaw, but again, growing up in the South. You eat slaw with pork. So if I make a pulled pork sandwich, I'm putting coleslaw on it. That's just what I like to do. Make this your own. You can eat, these por eat this pork belly just like it is. A lot of people just eat it as is, and that's fine. We like to French it up here on the Traeger Kitchen Live. That way I can take my super uncomfortable bite for you guys. Okay. That looks good. What questions? Where can you find those buns, buns? Where can I find buns? So um, I got, well, actually, I got those local Japanese restaurant friends of mine sourced them for me. But you just go to an Asian market. It's a local Asian market, Asian grocery store. Uh, Central Market here in Dallas sells them. Could you add pineapple to slaw? Absolutely. This is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys kind of the, the final final product. And I'm going to put my heat glove back on to pull these out. I'm going to try to let them start to cool off a little bit. I'm all right. I'll make it work. What's your favorite Traeger rub and sauce? What's my favorite Traeger rub and sauce? That's a good question. I was going to say you could use the Traeger pork and poultry rub. Um, with uh, with this seasoning um, and with this seasoning with this recipe, you know, if you guys want, which is really good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna one hand this. I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna toss these up just a little bit, but you can see um, that you know the sauce is still wet, which is what I'm personally what I want. I want them to be a little saucy. Some people like to cook it down to where there's not a lot. Like when I cook ribs, I don't want the sauce to run off your run off your face. But with this recipe, I'm down to get basically a little bit messy. I guess is the best way I can put it. So this might be a little more sauce than something we normally do. So clearly you can make that your own. You guys can less, more sauce, whatever you want to do. That's the cool thing about this. Just kind of do whatever you want. Whew, those look good. Okay, before I build these, why don't we get into a giveaway question for those of you that have been paying attention. And I think we're going to give multiple winners for this question, but you had to be paying attention. All right, you ready? All right, what seasoning did I use on the pork belly and what pellet? So two-part question, what seasoning and what pellet? Answer in the comments, and quite a few of you are going to win, actually, the seasoning that we used on this and the pellets. How about that? So remember, at the end, there's like a grand prize, um, which is going to be really cool, so don't go anywhere. Oh, Coach Clark is finally tuning in. Oh. Hey, Coach Clark. Oh, I need to give a shout-out to uh, 666 Grill. 
Uh, he told me my beard and my hair looked amazing today. And that kid up in Canada, he lives in a town of like 12 people. Um, I'm not sure the name of the town, but pretty excited to, to hear from old Josh today. Big Traeger fan. Okay, I'm going to move into building um, while we're, um, I don't know, while we're talking. So we've got our buns that we've steamed here that are hot as heck. Man, they are hot. It's quite all right. Okay, I'm going to start putting a little, uh, you know what, I guess I should put the slaw in first. What other questions we got while I build these? So we're just going to stuff a little slaw in here. And then, you know, I told you in the beginning, Pork belly's got, you know, Asian roots as far as I'm concerned from a cuisine perspective. So, you know, why not? Bam. Man, I, I made that one a little bit messy. It's okay. Uh, if you were to not get a skinless belly, what's the easiest way to remove the skin? Uh, if you were to not get a skinless belly, what's the easiest way to remove the skin? That's a great question, too. Um, I would remove the skin, definitely. You can use the skin for you know, cracklings or something if you want, but you got to trim it off. It's kind of a pain, to be honest with you. Usually in grocery stores, you're not going to find a whole lot of that, so that's that's the good news. But, uh, you know, you could have a buddy that's raising hogs, and he says, hey, I'm going to give you a pork belly, and it's probably going to come with the skin on it. Uh, and you might get, like, the errant nipple on the skin, which is always an adventure. But it's kind of fun to cook it like that and try to feed it to your buddy. Let me tell you, I'm making a mess today. That's all right. Told you to get messy with it. Other questions? Pretty caught up. Uh, how tasty was Robinson Barbecue Smoked Pineapple? How tasty was Robinson's Barbecue Smoked Pineapple? Well, most of you know I don't eat Robinson Barbecue. Um, you know, my insurance expired recently, and uh, I just can't afford the doctor visit. Who's asking that? I have no idea. It's a legitimate question. You never know when Robinson Barbecue is going to just throw in some errant questions that weren't really asked. But go follow him on Instagram so he's happy. He's, uh, he's trying to break 200 followers today. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're good on okay. All right. Well, here we go. Oh, where are you going? All right, man. Well, we got messy with it. That's okay. Oh, we got one more. One more errant. Okay. Well, I made some some messy slaw today. That's all right. My wet towel. Okay. This one? It's all right. Okay. There we go. Well, it's probably time to eat or drink or both. So, all right, before I eat that, I'm letting it cool just a little bit. Let's recap this cook. It was really simple, right? We took the, we took the belly hole. We cut it into one-inch cubes. We seasoned it very liberally uh, with our honey hog. We put those on a wire grid. We put them in the Timberline 1300 with cherry pellets, 250 degrees, and they took, you know, just a hair over two hours to reach an internal temperature of 195 degrees. We pulled them off on that rack, we put them in a half steam pan, and we covered them with Traeger's apricot sauce, and we put a little bit of honey in it. Um, I don't think I covered that the honey, you know, I mentioned that it kind of thins sauce out a little bit, but it adds some sweetness as well. So that move has nothing to do with the sauce that I use. That's just something I do with sauce in my barbecue frequently. Uh, we tossed it in that, we put it on the 1300, and it rocked for, I don't know, probably, we put it on right before we got here, so it's probably 45 minutes or so. Pulled it out, let it cool off, and they were ready to eat. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier, you know, you can just eat them just like this, right? Like, um, you don't have to put them on anything. Most people just eat them just like this. So, put our little moon flags on here. 
We're all about the marketing at the meat church. So, bam. There you go. You can just eat them just like that. Uh, but we made our little apple slaw here. Uh, and we're going to get at it. So um, Traeger really appreciates the awkward bites that I take. And Corey always seems to capture these moments for us. So here we go. That's good. Man. So pork belly is really tender. Honestly, it's not overly sweet. It's sweet, but not like candy. So I actually love it in this bun because the bun cuts some of the sweetness. So does the slaw. So it actually balances out pretty well as opposed to if I was just to eat it straight like this, which is usually how I do it. That piece right there, I could have just gummed it. Totally tender, no effort. Man, that's like super good. I love that sauce. Um, really, really good. Final giveaway question? Yep. Hmm. Time for the grand prize. So what do you win? Okay. The final, the grand prize. You are going to win. Question. You are going to win a seat in Traeger's um, private table class. So this is a virtual class. You should actually have to buy tickets to get in. Uh, amazing classes, great lineup. You're going to get a seat absolutely for free if you can get this question right, which is? I like to eat with my mouth full. What festival did we make these pork belly burn-ins at that our line was longer than the beer line? Where did we roll out this recipe in Tyler, Texas? Where is it so popular? Answer that question in the comments, and Traeger will tell us who the winner is. All right, got some questions. Got some questions, and I'm hungry. Get into the rub business. Also, do you recommend or do you mind if people use your rubs in competition? Great question. How did I get into the rub business? It's a great story, or I love telling the story. I competed in barbecue fairly casually, 12 times a year with my brother, under the name Meat Church. We were doing decent. We submitted a tryout to be on the TV show Barbecue Pitmasters, and we got picked. We had three weeks' notice from getting called to actually going on the show. And um, we made two rubs by hand, what's now known as Holy Cow and Honey Hog. And so I was at uh, a place here in Dallas-Fort Worth buying honey powder, which is an ingredient in this rub. And while the owner was in the back getting my honey powder, I looked down at a book and recognized labels and said, do you make these rubs? And he said, yeah, I'm their co-packer. I said, what's co-packer? He said, you give me your recipe. I make your rub. Um, you know, I'll sign an NDA. I make your rub. And so I called my brother and told him. He said, we'll do it. So I called the guy back and said, make my beef rub and call it Meat Church Holy Cow. I'll call you tomorrow with a name for that rub. Three weeks later, we were on the show. Um, I already kind of told that story. The, the uh, show aired. We used our two rubs. And uh, hence the accidental beginning of Meat Church. Now we've got uh, nine barbecue rubs, four gourmet rubs, three injections, one brine, one chicken fried breading, and like 100 different pieces of merch um, and focus on teaching. So it's been a pretty cool ride. I left my corporate job at 20 years, January last year, to do this full time. And honestly, I think we're the most popular seasoning in the backyard, especially amongst Traeger folks. But I don't know, just a feeling. What's your favorite type of Yeti mug? What's my favorite type of Yeti mug? All of them. Uh, I really like the stackable pints because they squeeze down at the bottom and they fit in the cup holders of my truck. But I love this mug, I'm not going to lie. When is Meat Church going to make a barbecue sauce? When is Meat Church going to make a barbecue sauce? It's a good question. It would have already been out if it weren't for COVID, so it's coming. It's just not there yet.
had, had some big shifts this year. I'm sure you guys are aware because you're all doing this, but the cook from home rage this year has been crazy. I mean, volumes just went insane for all of us, and so we all had to readjust what we were doing, focus on trying to meet current demand and slow down new product development um, and our new store growth and things like that. So if you go into retailers like Academy Sports and Outdoors, people that were low on stock, it's just because the demand is like, you know, six times normal or something like that due to everyone cooking at home. Do you use the super smoke function often? Do I use the super smoke function? Absolutely. So anytime um, I'm at a temperature low enough to use super smoke, I hit it. Uh, because, I, you know, I grew up smoking on a stick burner and you, know, you can't get too much smoke for that. So if I'm under 225 degrees, I'm hitting super smoke on literally everything I do. I like smoke. I try to impart smoke in every single thing I do from cocktails to dessert. So the more smoke, the better for me. If I'm buying a Traeger on a budget, which, which, which one would you recommend? If you're buying a Traeger on a budget, what I, what I tell people is just try to buy the newer models, the D2 models. So, you know, you can get into the Pro Series for $7.99. The technology that comes in it uh, is, is amazing. The, the ability to control uh, your Traeger from your phone and monitor it and it, being able to monitor your stuff remotely is like you won't believe how helpful that is but there are no issues with the D2 grills uh, like I said I have every model and I've literally never had one issue and so I can't say enough good things about the ones that came out in 2019 so you know try to get into uh, you know at least a, a Pro 575 which is 799 bucks all right let's do the last question and then announce the giveaway uh, last question how did you come up with the name Meat Church? Last question before we we're going to announce the winner of our giveaway. Um, how did I come up with the name Meat Church? A friend of mine is a really funny food writer in Dallas, and on a Sunday morning she was at a barbecue joint here that's called Slow Bone, true story. And uh, she took a picture of her barbecue. She tweeted it like 11.30 Sunday morning. She basically said, I'm about to have my hashtag Meat Church, and I thought it was clever. Saved it. I didn't run with it right away. And down the road I was trying to rebrand our, our, um, our barbecue team name, and I thought, you know what? We barbecue to bring people together to have a good time, fill my backyard with people, go to a Cowboys game, you know, hang out, the fellowship aspect of it. I just thought it worked. The name was a little edgy, uh, so I thought I'd go with it, but uh, it's been a huge part of our success. You won't forget the name usually, so that's the short of it. All right, you ready to announce the grand prize winner? So we're going to announce the grand prize winner. I'm going to go ahead and tell you so that you don't run off right when this is over. Uh, 15 minutes after this is over, go to Instagram Live, uh, go to Traeger's account, and Chad Ward and I will have about a 15 minute BS session where we have a cocktail and talk about what we did, answer more questions. We'll interact with you guys directly on there. So hop over to Instagram uh, when you get off here. If you don't have Instagram, stop being old, open an Instagram account, winner of the grand prize. Winner is a seat at a private table class. Olson? Nick Olson. I don't know Nick, this is not rigged. So congratulations to Nick Olson. I guess he was the first one to say that uh, this recipe debuted at Red Dirt Barbecue Music Festival in Tyler, Texas. Our good buddy, Chase Colston. That's it? Bam. Well, look at that. Perfect timing. Sorry, I gotta take some more bites. So, Thank you guys for sticking around, spending, a, spending an hour with me. Um, thank you to Traeger Grills for doing this. Nobody does it like Traeger does it. They called me months ago and said, hey, we want, we've got this concept uh, to teach these virtual classes. Do you want to do it? And I'm like, heck yeah. If you know me, I actually teach right here in this outdoor kitchen, but it's all on hold due to the crazy pandemic. So this is my opportunity to um, you know, share my passion with you guys, share my fashion sense with you guys. Uh, so. Excited to be here. Uh, I'll no doubt be back uh, sometime in September uh, to do it again. So reach out to me and tell me what you'd like to see because they're going to come back and ask me what do you want to teach. So let me know what you want to see and I'll try to get it dialed up for September. So thank you guys very much for watching and see you guys over on Instagram here in a few minutes.